Feminism, it is a hot topic in today's society and the church today. While many people see it as a great idea and movement, others see it as a direct attack on men and the family system. So this video explores feminism from a biblical perspective. So please watch with an open mind before you start commenting and going into keyboard warrior status and talking about the patriarchy and all this other stuff. But other than that, hey, don't forget to share and like for extra views for people to get the message on this, all right? So let's get to it. So basically, feminism is the idea that women are free when they serve their employers, but slaves when they serve their husband and children? Yeah, I know, feminism. It's a social, political, and cultural movement that advocates for the equality of all genders with a primary focus on achieving equal rights and opportunities for women. It seeks to address and challenge systematic inequality, stereotypes, and discrimination that women face in various aspects of life including education, employment, pay gaps. I mean, hey, I get that's real too. Healthcare, politics, and personal autonomy. Does that sound about right? So we cannot deny the fact that we live in a society where certain people are marginalized and mistreated due to their gender, race, disabilities, and etc. And let's be real, sometimes women are often oppressed and cheated because they are perceived as weak and vulnerable. Kind of like the notion that when a woman takes her car to the mechanic, and we're talking about the mechanic potentially, allegedly price gouging her because of her lack of knowledge on automobiles. Kind of like this spice at his meme. Hey, I got memes, I gotta use them at my disposal, but this is just for humor takes, you know what I mean? So it's logical to have groups rise up and advocate for their rights and fight for justice in instances where they are oppressed, bullied, cheated, or threatened. So the Bible supports the original idea of feminism or equality. So the Bible states that we are all equal before God. In other words, God does not place a gender above the other. For example, in Galatians chapter 3, verse 28, it states, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Also in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, it tells us that we all have God's image. So God created mankind in his own image, you know? In the image of God, he created them male and female he created them so we are all equal in god's eyes this is god we're talking about but now we're talking about you and i how we all view things here but we all know that the devil always finds a way to pollute good things that is his mission he only comes to steal kill and destroy and that's in john chapter 10 verse 10. so feminism is a great idea but if we are honest the devil seems to infiltrate it and make it toxic Yeah, that's what the devil does. He makes things toxic. It's good, just like Adam and Eve. He takes that woman and makes her eat the fruit because, now I'm digressing. So unfortunately, from what is going on in social media, institutions, and in families, feminism has changed from an idea of helping women leverage in society to a direct attack against men and the marriage institution. Most women with the feminist tag portray pure hatred towards men. Come on now, I got nothing but love for you, baby. That's, that's a little heavy D. But jokes aside, why does it seem like every feminist on the street is angry or bitter against men? Because their activism is founded upon hate and not love. What does that mean? Okay, look, like, okay, so in the clip, the guy talked about serving your employers, but you signed up for that. You accepted that job. Yes, you need to work to live, but you could apply to another job if you don't like your employer, right? But to serve your husband and children, you do that out of love. So what this means is most self-acclaimed feminists became one because they were cheated on by their partners, mistreated by their boss or employee, or even divorced, whatever the reason may be. Note these are arguably good reasons to advocate for equal rights, but good things cannot be achieved through a negative mindset. That's like building a building on a faulty foundation. And we're gonna go with Psalms chapter 11, verse three. We're gonna use that scripture on that. So true feminism should be founded upon genuine love for women, not hatred for men. Come on now, it takes two to tango, right? So the Bible says you cannot love God and hate your brother. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him. 
that he who loves God must also love his brother too. And that's in 1 John chapter 4, verses 20 to 21. So should women submit to and serve their husbands and not serve like in the way like, come on, woman, make me something to eat when I get home. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about that. Though a sandwich would be nice, but out of love. You make that, let me do the dishes. I got you. So a true believer knows that anything that stands against God's word is of the devil. Before we embrace any ideology, we must search scriptures to understand God's view about what we want to support to not go against our faith and God. So the Bible gives women or wives clear instructions on how to relate with their husbands. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22 to 24 states, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be their own husbands in everything. So within a Christian marriage, God's law dictates that a woman should submit and serve her man. Take care of your man. Feed your man. Rub your man's belly. You get men, you got to reciprocate too. Don't not her boss. Don't serve him. Well, you know what I mean. But be a good employee. Do the job. Do the work. But not only that, a woman must also nurture her children and take care of her own home as a virtuous woman that she is. And that's in Proverbs chapter thirty-one, verse ten to thirty. Now, if you don't want kids, I understand that kids are a lot of work, but I also love my kids. Even though sometimes I can't stand my kids, I love my kids. I know this is the internet that's going to be on forever. Just know I do love you. Just like sometimes you can't stand daddy. I know you love daddy too. <laughs> but back to the subject at hand. But there are some of a woman's primary responsibilities in a marriage. So going against these in the name of feminism or woke culture is demonic and unbiblical. Now, how should a man respond or act in the marriage towards his wife? Well, if you look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22, it says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. In other words, a husband should love his wife so much that he can literally die for her just as Jesus died for us. That's that scripture right there. Can you see that God is not against women or want to enslave them in their marriage? It's out of love. A woman should submit to her husband and a man should love his wife and be willing to sacrifice everything, including his life. I mean, I do that for my kids. I better go before they do. Otherwise, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel natural. But anyways, this is what most feminists will never tell you. Therefore, women must know that submitting to their husbands is an act of worship to God. While men must understand unconditional and sacrificial love is what God expects them to show towards their wife. You take God out of it, you take love out of it, what do you get? People going crazy. With all that being said, I'm an author of four books. Link in description. This video is also sponsored by coffee. So if you'd like to buy your boy a cup of coffee, link in description or donate to the super thanks. But the greatest compliment you guys can do is by liking and subscribing to this channel. And also, if there's any other videos you want me to react to, let me know. Thank you again for watching. Until the next upload.